breathtaking. I shall call him Mini Me. Hey, hey, welcome to Half the Battle. You know, it's been a good while since I've done an actual review. And since this is the summer of vehicles and playsets, it's time I got back to that. And today, we'll be looking at a classic. Something small, yet memorable. That's what she said. So meet the Armadillo Mini Tank. This vehicle was released in 1985 with all original parts. Oh, look at the cute little guy. Isn't he precious? <coughs> Sorry. Well, you can't accuse Hasbro of false advertisement here. It certainly is a mini tank. Oh man, I'm just having some fun here. I really like this little vehicle. One of the reasons is because it's small. It doesn't take up a lot of space, but can still hold three figures. So, as a kid, it wouldn't take up a lot of room on the playing field, and as a collector, it doesn't take up a lot of room on the shelf. Another reason is that it doesn't have any small accessories to easily lose. Hey, I like stuff like missiles and such on vehicles, in moderation anyway, hide or slam, but it makes finding complete ones a pain in the ass. So, it's nice that some of them don't have stuff to lose. Not that it stops there being incomplete armadillos out there, because life finds a way. The most common thing missing is the handlebar on the back, followed by the turret, which for some baffling reason is also removable. Moving on, let's get a closer look and talk about that detailing. It's pretty impressive, especially for such a small thing. Most of it is on the top, with panels, a radiator, a fuel cap and a tow rope. On the back there's a pattern where figures can stand. Sadly, unlike a lot of vehicles of the time, this one does not have a tow hook, which I feel is a bit of an oversight. And when you turn it upside down, there's no detailing whatsoever. Well, with the exception of the tank threads. It also has wheels so it can roll, which brings us to the playability. The driver is well protected inside the turret, something of a novelty for G.I. Joe vehicles. Cross country must be green with envy when looking at this thing. Two additional figures fit comfortably on the back and are kept in place with foot pegs. The turret can in theory move 360 degrees, but in practice just a little over 180 as the handlebar stops it. Though, as I pointed out, that's removable. The guns can elevate about 45 degrees. One neat little feature is that it fits perfectly in the vehicle bay of the tactical battle platform, as well as other playsets like the mobile command center. Overall, it's a fun little vehicle and was great for kids who couldn't get a mauler or mobat tank. And it looks good in any collection today. And fortunately, you can still find them cheaply on the secondary market today, under 20 bucks even. And that was the only toy the Armadillo got in the original line. Its name and body were reused to create the Slaughter's Marauder's Armadillo in 1989 with missiles instead of guns. And it was reissued and sometimes renamed in more modern lines, but those are reviews for another day. With that, it's time to talk about the character, but of course, there is no file card. No sorry, there certainly isn't. God, I've missed doing that. The front of the box doesn't tell us anything I haven't already told you, but it has Dusty as the driver, with Alpine and Spirit on the back. Okay, Dusty is a weird choice. He's a desert trooper, while the Armadillo isn't a desert vehicle. Since the toy didn't come with a driver, might pick Lady J or Footloose for color coordination if no other reason, or Flint to use as a sort of field command vehicle. The back of the box doesn't give us much either. It's a G.I. Joe weapon that's good at getting out of tight spots, presumably because of its small size. The last interesting thing is on the blueprints. Where it turns out the handlebar doubles as a roll bar to protect the driver. You wouldn't think a tank needs to worry too much about rolling over, but this thing is very small. As far as other media go, the armadillo shows up in the cartoon quite a few times, most notably in The Spy Who Rook Me, but there's not much to say about it. In the comics, it debuts in issue 37, first driven by the also debuting Flint, and does get a chance to shine, but isn't featured much afterwards. Yeah, for the comic, this was very much a feature it wants to show off the new toy, then forget about it deal. Still, it was there in both the comic and the cartoon, which isn't nothing. It also got put in a commercial that featured Tomac, Seymot and the Ferret. And that about wraps it up. Overall, the Armadillo is a cool little vehicle that anybody would enjoy having in their collection, and since it's still pretty cheap to find, I'd say it's a must-get. Doesn't really remind me of an actual Armadillo, though. Well, I'll see you next time, everybody. And hey, why not like, share, and subscribe if that's your thing? Breathtaking. 
I shall call him Mini-Me. <laughs> <laughs>